Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, how does a fuel cell work? Fuel cells may be the energy source of the future for all sorts of gadgets and vehicles, our cars, laptops and even surveillance aircraft. But what are they and how do they work? Many of our current ways of generating electricity, including coal-fired power stations and nuclear power, convert the energy in a fuel to electricity by first converting the energy to heat, which drives an engine that produces the electricity, which isn't very efficient. A good car engine is only about 30% efficient. A fuel cell is a device that uses a chemical reaction to create electricity directly from the fuel, and these can show up to 80% efficiency. The classic example of a fuel cell is a hydrogen fuel cell, which takes advantage of the fact that when you react hydrogen and oxygen to produce water, energy is released. If you ignite the hydrogen and oxygen, the energy is released in a disordered explosion or in small quantities as the squeaky pop when you hold a lit splint at the end of a test tube full of hydrogen. But if you're clever with your chemistry, the energy can be released in a more controlled, if slightly less fun, way. This is where the fuel cell comes in. In a fuel cell, it's possible to break the reaction into two halves by using a membrane to keep the two gases apart. On one side, hydrogen molecules lose electrons to the anode to form H plus ions, which diffuse through the electrolyte in the centre of the cell. On the other side, these H plus ions react with oxygen and gain electrons from the cathode to produce water. For this to happen, electrons have to flow from the anode to the cathode in an electric current, so a fuel cell works just like a battery with a much higher energy capacity that you can recharge by adding more hydrogen. If you force the electrons to go in the opposite direction by applying a voltage, you could actually split the water back into hydrogen and oxygen again, which is called electrolysis. There are other types of fuel cell that use different electrolytes. Alkali cells use potassium hydroxide as the electrolyte, and in fact this type of fuel cell powered the electrical systems on the Apollo moon rockets, and the astronauts drank the water they produced. Some fuel cells use solid oxide electrolytes and run on natural gas rather than hydrogen. These operate at very high temperatures, over a thousand degrees C, but don't have the potential problem of leaking electrolyte. They could in fact easily be used in your water boiler at home to heat the water using the waste heat produced instead of a metal element, whilst at the same time generating electricity for you. There are problems with fuel cells, however, particularly when it comes to using them for something like a car. One of the main issues is that many fuel cells run on hydrogen, a gas. This is pretty hard to carry around with you in your car, as it would have to be contained in heavy pressurised tanks. Plus, hydrogen itself is, as we saw, pretty explosive, so not necessarily the safest thing to be carrying around in your car. One solution to this is to use a liquid fuel like methanol. So we are already seeing fuel cells in some applications, but there are still problems and compromises on efficiency, temperature, electrolyte and fuel sources that need to be worked on before we all start using fuel cells in our daily lives. That's it for this time. To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye.